Hello, friends, and welcome. I had such a revelation last night while reading the book of Revelation. I just wanted to share it with you. And it is found in Revelation chapter 1, verse 20. Now, this is what the whole verse says. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. Now, we have spoken, at least in the comments on this channel, about how things have a double meaning or more than one meaning. Last night while I was reading the book of Revelation, this small phrase just kept popping out at me as if some sort of confirmation to what we've already discussed. The seven stars are the angels. The seven stars are the angels. And I started thinking about the seven planets of our solar system. They looked just like stars in the sky. The star of Bethlehem was likely well, many are saying the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. So I just felt very blessed last night when I came across that passage, that phrase, and I was excited to share it with you because um, it's just to me, it was confirmation. And I know as we get closer and closer to October, we're almost there. People are starting to say, well, what if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't happen? And those who are looking for it to happen on the 7th and 8th because of a, you know, recalculation of a holiday feast, one, that's not reflective of what I see in the star. Although, hey, it's it would be great if it happened. I'm all for that for sure. But that's not what I see in the stars. And the stars to this point have been very accurate. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out is that the Feast of Trumpets 2017 sign did occur on the day of the current Torah calendar. So it seems to me that that is the medium that God is choosing to communicate with his people. If it happens this coming week, great. I'm all for it. Um, it, uh, it would actually be on my mom's birthday, which is October the 8th. But I'm looking a little further in the month. And as we get closer, I will probably just do some updates maybe in the evening, uh, just to show everybody what is happening in the sky. For instance, Mars just passed the star Parima. What does that mean? Well, the star itself, the name, is from the goddess of prophecy. And I thought, wow, that's very appropriate right now. The star that it just passed, um, I believe, is Zanaya, and it means corner, which might not mean a lot at first glance, but perhaps we've turned a corner. It's hard to say, uh, but these are things I'm still learning and I'm doing my best to share with you all. So go ahead and share your questions. We might get to them at the end of the video. For now, let's jump into Revelation chapter three. Lord, please bless the hearing of your word. And before we get into that even, I'm just going to pop the Bible open just to see, because God has been sharing so many wonderful things. And speaking about my mom, here's her picture. God bless her. Oh, my goodness. So Jeremiah 2, actually 1 and 2 is what popped up here. And I've got a few things underlined here. I'm not going to read everything. Uh, verse 10 or 9 and 10 of chapter 1 of the book of Jeremiah says, at least on this page, now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to overthrow, to build and to plant. All right. Thank you for that, God. And thank you for the appearance of my mom. So people, <clears throat> it's so easy when we look at the book of Revelation to think of defeat. And a lot of people have been getting, Dana Coverstone comes to mind, dreams of, of warning that people in the church are going to be defeated. And yet when I look at God's word, we keep give, getting over and over and over again, overcome. You can overcome. And 
adversity was diverted. Their leaders clothed themselves in sackcloth, put an, an edict out to everyone that they had to pray to the living God to repent. And as we said before, it wasn't because Jonah was such an amazing orator. It was because they had maybe two witnesses in the skies, planets, saying disaster. And at that time, they probably knew what that would have meant because uh, the plagues of Egypt had already manifested, you know, hundreds of years prior. That ruler, Pharaoh, did not humble himself, and they went through the judgments, the plagues. The king of Nineveh did just the opposite. He had learned from that experience, that mistake of that other ruler. So let's go ahead and jump into chapter three of the book of Revelation, more letters to the churches in that time. Uh, Turkey is where they were located. And I just want everyone to realize Revelation does not have to be difficult. We can go through this together. I'll answer your, your questions to the best of my ability, but it's relatively easy to understand. Just like in my videos, before I do the simulations with the star charts, delirium, I just tell people, this is what we're looking for. That's the same with the, the book of Revelation. It tells you what you're looking for, introduces the characters, and that's uh, at different portions, particularly chapters 12, 13, especially it will run through the, the act. Revelation was not meant to be a novel. There are so many things that can change with prayer and humbling ourselves. But I just want people to know that this book is relatable. It's attainable. Don't be intimidated by it. Let's jump in. Verse 1, chapter 3. And to the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. This actually reminds me of a dream I had. There was a pastor of a previous church who was in my dream. And he was a head pastor. Um, but I've showed everybody that, you know, there are pages of my Bible that have fallen out. I've used it so many times. I look at it as a badge of honor. Yep, my Bible's falling apart. I'd put it back together if I anticipated that we were going to be here much longer. But right now, it's just... I love it. Well, a couple of pages had fallen out, and this particular pastor picked them up and just crinkled them up and pushed them back in the Bible. And he did it twice, and I started to cry. Now, had this happened in real life, real life, I would not have started to cry. I would have had some words or some expressions or something. But in this case, I started to cry. Why was this pastor impelled to or compelled to shove the scripture and crinkle it and just hide it in the Bible. Why not proclaim it? That's where many churches are. They think that they're great, but, and that they live us, but they're dead. Pray for these pastors, pray for these churches. The word of God, it is a two-edged sword and it's going to be manifesting very soon. Verse two, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. There's still hope that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. Thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, which likely is representation of the body, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that, oh, I love this word. I knew it was coming, and I just about said it. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, okay? You might not have been one of those who kept your garments from being defiled with the injection, with the mark, with whatever. That's okay. If you overcome with God's help, you shall be clothed in white raiment, just like everybody else. And we'll see this, I believe it's in chapter seven, that talks about the saints who wash their robes in the blood of the lamb to make them white. 
And we've talked about this. I'll put this in the other revelation playlist that has a more of an in-depth view than what we're doing. We're just reading through it and just commenting on whatever the spirit reveals. And, okay, so he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. Pray for open ears, tender hearts. Pray for our pastors. Verse seven, and to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, right? These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man, no vaccine, no mark, no false prophet, no antichrist can shut it. For thou hast little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, these NAR churches, New, West, New Apostolic Reformation, beast system, mega churches that are in it for profits, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet. And to know, I have loved thee. These saints who have not denied Christ's name, have not done anything to defile their garments, God's going to confess them before his father. And his father is going to reward them to the point that everybody's going to know. They love Jesus, and Jesus loved them, and they were working together. It didn't matter how much people made fun of them. They were in God's will, and that's going to be clear. So be encouraged, loved ones, that some of us today, but tomorrow, when that time comes, everyone will know that you were with God, and he was blessed by you. Verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. I read that. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the earth, just like a furnace, just like silver being refined. But if you resist the temptations to Align yourself with these beast system churches, with the beast system government, with the beast system. I believe that this is saying you're going to escape that tribulation, the wrath of God. I should say the wrath of God. Verse 11, behold, I come quickly. Hold fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Do not look left or right. A lot of people, they think of this vaccine. It's just like the wave in the sea that tempted Peter. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's a wave. It's a vaccine. Blah, blah, blah. I got a comment. You're not focused on the vaccine enough. Of course I'm not. Peter should not have focused on the wave. Just look to Jesus. Just look to Jesus. There's nothing new under the sun. So Nineveh, they, they had just as much DNA corruption, if not more, probably more than is present today. So um, just keep your focus on God. We reflect what we expose ourselves to. Just keep your focus on God. Okay, one, one moment. All right, friends, sorry about that, that we almost had a medical emergency here. Okay, so 
<laughs> um, him that overcometh, verse 12, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. They're going to be sealed. And the name of the city of my God, they've got their address on there too, which is new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Verse 14, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So this is the last church, the church of Laodicea. Some say that this is an age. These churches are ages. And this is the age that we are in right now. They're not hot. They're not cold. Um, one of our previous, was it the first one, Sardis? You have the reputation that you are alive, but you are dead. Uh, verse 1. <clears throat> So this, um, this is hot, cold. What are you? Are you on my side? Are you on the other side? Which, which is it? Um, and that's a valid question. We're going to learn a little bit more about that. Verse 16. So then because thou art lukewarm, either hot nor cold, shove passages of scripture right back in the Bible, all crinkled up. You want to hide it. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. You think, oh, we're on, we're on top of the hill. We're the big dogs. Look at us. Blessing the whole city. God says, no, you're miserable. You are not on fire for me at all. You're, you're looking at the waves. You're looking at every other thing. But humbling yourselves. It's not the injection. The injection is recent. That's not what's bringing judgment. It is the death of the innocent. You can't just wink at that. You can't just ignore it, not speak out. You're going to speak out at some time. It's either going to be before the wrath of God or after. I hope, I hope at least these pastors speak out. Verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Where have we heard that before in Micah? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the needy and increases the power of the weak. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. This is the kind of gold you want. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. A lot of these pastors, yeah. This is how they can be described because they're showing off the, the wretchedness, the greed, the self-reliance and pomp. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Pray, pray for God to help us all see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. If God's not rebuking and chastening you. Are you sure you have that relationship with him that you say you do? Be zealous, therefore. And repent. God still rebukes and chastens me. <laughs> Working with the public, I see all the more clearly what my deficiencies are every day. And I praise God for it. I'm getting better and stronger. Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, any man, no matter what they've done, 
what they've been through, what they've overcome. Any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. They will dine together. Verse 21, to him that overcometh, yes, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. The care that God gives to Jesus, he wants to give to us, his bride. That is so beautiful. And we're about to overcome. This isn't going to be a time of just utter defeat. But we have to make sure that we are fighting the right battle. Okay? A lot of these NAR, New New Apostolic Reformation mega churches have aligned themselves with Donald Trump. Paula White, oh, a spiritual advisor. You do not want to align yourself with that. Even if they seem to be fighting, you know, whatever. Take that to the Lord and fight for him. Don't focus on Trump or any other leader. Just quietly pray, fast and pray. Speak out when God tells you to. He'll give you the words to do it. But be wise. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Psalm 20, verse 7. Same with the end times, even more so. Please don't be fooled, but continue to give your heart, your allegiance to him. Some are going to be left behind, and that's just their lot. That's how things were ordained. We see that in Romans 9. Pharaoh, his lot was to not be in compliance with God, with Moses' request, to rebel. Some people are going to find themselves in the tribulation, but as we draw closer to God, the less those tribulation pains will be. Do take his warning. The last, excuse me, the first star that appears at night will likely be Venus. And as it gets closer and closer to the horizon, it will be closer and closer in in conjunction with the sun. That's going to be in early January. And what that means is that the fifth seal is about to be released. That angel is going into the sun. It's going to be strengthened and that judgment will be unsealed. If you can make it to Texas, make it to Texas. Many are getting the word that that's going to be a safe place. Have oil and flour. Make sure you have oil, flour, and water as your bases. If you can get other supplies, sugars, any spices, any raisins or dried fruits, do that. But those are the things that we are really going to need. Rice, if you think that you're going to be in a situation where you can boil water, if you're going to have heat, um, If you can cook food uh, and not attract attention, great. Uh, But with the fourth seal, it's it's really going to get hard because the wild beasts of the earth. And I mean, to think about it in a way that doesn't sound very scary. There's not like a lot of mountain lions or um, a lot of deer that would get us necessarily. But there are beasts of the earth that are actually, as we are learning from Israeli News Life, if you're not on their Patreon account, you might want to, with all the fracking and uh, punctures into the crust of the earth, there are chambers, caverns, portals, if you will, being opened. And there are things coming out of the earth now that Hollywood has revealed, you know, because according to whatever karma with the Kabul, they've got to do that. Uh, one One of them is, I guess, kind of like the Swamp Thing, that old movie from the 80s or whatever. Those things that we always thought were myths, they're somewhere. They came from somewhere. So pray on these things. Um, It's going to get hard. You know, we've got another alien disclosure, and I guess next year it's going to be bad. It's going to be more and more sinister. We can't prepare for the tribulation, but we can at least not fully, but we can dig ourselves closer and closer to God and follow the direction that he gives us. Let's go ahead and open the Bible. 
Isaiah 60, end of 61, beginning of 62, this is what it says. So the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before the nations. Oh, pray for that revival. It's going to be magnificent. Uh, 62 verse 1, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her righteousness shines out like the dawn. Her salvation like a blazing torch. No longer. Verse 4, will they call you deserted or name your land desolate? But you will be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah. For the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married as a young man marries a maiden. So will your sons marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. I didn't expect that, but I praise God for giving us this sort of message. Hope is not lost. Don't fret. I mean, be prepared as much as you can, but you prepare with God's word. And you pray with God's word. Pray for your family members. Magnificent things are going to happen. And many are getting the message that they're going to start in Mexico. Um, And so, excuse me, um, this wall that's being built might have spiritual implications between the borders. Um, So just pray on these things. And don't get into despair if your family member isn't a believer. I've got family members that aren't believers. But God can change things, and I pray for them very much so. So don't focus on the wave. Focus on our God and just trust him. Trust the process. Trust what he's doing. Don't despair. Anybody um, could experience this. So just keep prayed up, fast and pray, and keep pursuing God. All right. I can't wait to spend time with you tomorrow. We're going to look at chapter four. We've talked about that chapter a lot. <clears throat> Hope is not lost. Yes. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for that, Jamie. I appreciate you. Look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. We're going to look at chapter four. We've talked about it a lot. And hey, maybe we've got some new insights this time. So take care. Have a blessed day. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.